What's going on everybody, my name is Caleb, and by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of pointers to pointers. This is often called double pointers, but I don't really like that name because it sounds like a pointer to a double. So in this video, we're just going to call them pointers to pointers. It's a little extra wordy, but it's a little bit more correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go through some basic examples of where you might run into these and why you might want to use them. Now, this is for C++ is what I'm going to be programming in, but it should work very similarly in C. And in fact, you'll probably run into pointers and double... Oh, did I just say double pointers? In fact, you're probably working with pointers in C a lot more because they don't have references. So you can follow along with this video in C. There just might be some minor differences when we get to the end of this video. So there's two main things I can think of when it comes to pointers to pointers, when you might find them and when you might want to use them. The first is actually when you're working with arrays of strings. This is commonly seen in the command line arguments for the main function. Now I did want to mention in C++, I would typically use the string class over just a character array. However, there are scenarios where you might need to use the character array for old school C style strings. So that's what we're going to be using in this video. And that's where you're most likely going to encounter a pointer to a pointer. So keep that in mind as you go through this content that you might prefer to use the string class in general, but this is good to know as well. Which before we get started, I did want to mention we have an upcoming C and C++ master course. So if you are interested in this, it's going to be releasing soon. Check out the link down below to get added to the newsletter. That's where I'll notify of this release. And it will be a major discount to buy the C and C++ bundle when the C bundle is released coming very soon. So that's going to cover things like what we're covering in this video, but in a lot more depth with a lot more examples. So I think it's going to be a really great resource. Now let's get to the video. So here we are in an empty C++ program. If you are in C, it's going to be pretty much the same, except it'll just be standard io.h for the include. And in either C or C++, you'll occasionally see some parameters defined here, and it's usually going to look like this. int arg c and then char asterisk asterisk arg v. So this is one way you will see it. Another way you might see this is just a single asterisk and square brackets here. But these are effectively the same exact thing, and I'm going to explain why here soon. So let's go ahead and put this back to char asterisk asterisk. So this is a pointer to a char pointer. And what these names mean, you can think arg count, the count of arguments, and then the arg vector, which is the actual data. Think of a vector as like an array. If you're familiar with C++, that's pretty common. However, in this scenario, it's not actually a vector data type. So if we wanted to work with this data, what you would do is you would say for int i is, and I'll usually start with one, because there's going to be an implicit argument passed in that isn't very useful to us. So we can skip that i less than arg c, the count of arguments passed in, and then i plus plus. Each iteration, we will write to the console with c out arg v index i. So what this is going to do is go through any command line arguments we pass in and print them to the console. So let's run this. And at first, it's not going to do anything. But if you go back to the command you use to execute your code, yours is probably not quite as complicated as this. It probably is just something like dot slash pointer pointer. That's the name of our file or a dot out if that's what you have your setup as. You can pass in extra data. Hello, my name is Caleb. And this can be read by the program and you can see it goes through each one of those printing it to the console. So we're going to fully understand what this is and why we are using that here. But to first do that, I wanna go with a basic example. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a character array to store a string. So it's going to look like this, char data square brackets. Hello, my name is Caleb. And this is a string. And we can get the size of this string standard C out size of data. And when we do this, we should get the value 23, which is the number of characters, 18, 20, 21, 22, and the null character to indicate the end of the string. If we went ahead and passed this to some function, let's just go ahead and call it print data. We could define the parameter here to be a char array. So we could just say char data with square brackets, just like we did down here. 
But the data passed to this function, if we said print data and passed in our data variable, this is going to decay to a pointer. And it basically just loses the rest of its type information, such as its size. So if we then took this line down here and did it inside of print data, and just to clear up any confusion, we'll comment this output here so we only see one. When we run this now, we get the value eight. So it no longer understands the size of the data, the length of the string, and instead is just giving the size of a character pointer. And in fact, that's what this warning is saying. Size of on array function parameter will return size of char pointer instead of char array. So just for clarity, you can actually redefine this parameter as a char pointer. And that is a pretty common convention. So an alternative way of thinking of a character array is as a character pointer, and it's still going to have that null terminator at the end so we'll still know when the end of the string is reached. If we want to work with multiple string literals like this what we could do is we could surround them in curly braces like so and then just do comma separated values hello your name is subscriber. To do this because each one of these can be seen as a character pointer we can just see this as an array of character pointers and this will be valid code. But if we then wanted to take our now array of character pointers and pass it to a function, that function is going to need to be defined as a character pointer array, like so. Or similarly, as we know arrays decay to pointers, you can replace that square brackets with double asterisks here and it's going to work the same way. When we do this, we're not going to have the size of the array or how many strings are included in that array, so we'll typically have another argument here such as size. This will be passed in, so we'll say size is two for two strings. Now what we could do in this function is actually loop through this data. So it might look like this, for int i is zero, i less than size, i plus plus, standard c out, data, and you can still use square brackets to basically jump to the next pointer in that array. So data of i. And each pointer in that array is going to point to a string. So this should work fine. Standard end line. So we run this. We do have a warning. This is just complaining about the way we defined this with the string literals. Basically, it's going to want us to define these as const. And additionally, we'll define this as const up here. And I think that should do the trick. So we'll save that and run. And you can see it prints both of those values. So with this context, you should now understand what's going on here. We basically have the first argument being the count, very similar to this. And the second thing being the array of character arrays. So that's the first scenario where you might encounter a pointer to a pointer. The other scenario where you're going to have a pointer to a pointer is if you want to be able to change a pointer value inside of a function. To illustrate this, we're going to get rid of everything else we have here. We're not going to need it. We're not going to need the parameters defined there either. So let's just go through an example where we can create a pointer. So you'll often get a pointer if you use new. So let's say we're working with an int pointer called data, and this is going to be a new int with the value five. Inside of C programming, it's going to be very similar, except you don't have the new operator, so you could instead use malloc and pass in the size needed. And then we'll go ahead and output the value of this by dereferencing that pointer, and we should get the value 5. So running this, and you can see the value 5 in the terminal. So let's go ahead and create a function, void modify data, and this is going to take an int pointer. We'll also call it data, no big deal. And inside of here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to assign it a new value. So the value at data is going to now be 10. And then down here, we will invoke modify data, passing in the data pointer. So we'll save, we'll run this code, and now we get the value 10. So this works, we can change the value that a pointer points to, no big deal. You can see we're printing that outside of the function call and it retains the value 10. But if there's a scenario where we actually wanted to change where a pointer points to, it's going to be a little bit different. So what that might look like is inside of our code here, we could create a new pointer. So we'll just call it int pointer temp and we'll say new int and we'll give it the value 10. And now what we could do is just assign this to data. But to do this, what we can do is actually delete data. So we're not going to need the previous pointer just as a extra little 
bonus point there. And then last thing we'll do is we will assign to data temp. And let's just see what happens when we output this. So we will dereference data and put a new line. So now we have two outputs, one outside of the function and one inside of the function. When we run this, the first one to be printed is actually inside of the function. So this line is hit, we set data to five, we invoke modify data, inside of modify data we replace that pointer to point somewhere else, and then we print the value at data, and you can see it prints 10. But then, after that function finishes and we come back to line 13, and we output data, it still has the value 5. So if you wanted to be able to change the pointer itself, where it actually points, then you're going to need a pointer to that pointer. Anytime you need to basically change data, you need to add one layer of pointers. So that's why if you wanted to just change data inside of a function and have it change outside, you would need a single pointer. If you wanted to change that pointer, you're going to need a pointer to a pointer. Same thing if you were working with three levels of pointers or four levels of pointers but don't ever do that. So to fix this, all we need to do is define this as a pointer to an int pointer, and this is going to change the way we type some of this other stuff. Now we can change the pointer by first dereferencing and removing the old pointer from memory. Similarly here, when we assign a new pointer, we will dereference to work with that first layer pointer. And then when we invoke modify data, we'll actually pass the address of data, which is going to be used to create a pointer. And now, when we save and run, we should get 10 and, oh well, the output here is messed up, so you can dereference this twice since we're working with a pointer to a pointer. Now we should get 10, 10. So here's a small example of where you might encounter this. If you had a linked list and a pointer that pointed to the start of that list, and you wanted to create a function to change the linked list, such as putting a new element at the front of the list, to be able to change that start pointer, you're going to need a pointer to a pointer. This is going to allow you to modify the start pointer to point to the new data. I know this code is completely out of context, so you might not understand it all, but there are various scenarios where you're working with pointers and you want to abstract away some complex code, so you move it to a function, but because you moved it to a function, in order to actually work with those pointers and change values, you now need to work with a pointer to a pointer. So while we haven't covered every possible scenario where you might encounter these, we gave a couple of examples and gave you the foundation of how they work. So you should be able to take these principles and apply them in various locations. Let me know in the comments in what scenario you ran into working with a pointer to a pointer and if you got any tips to make it easier besides just not doing that. But thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.